guys, I'm here today to start the reading of my most recent book, Under Contract, Life in the Middle of Dreams. It was um, released over the summer of 2016, and as I began to pray about this year, 2017, I began to ask the Lord to show me ways of how I could continue to be creative per se and still shine His light and where He would be directing me. As I've prayerfully considered and kind of backtracked from some areas in my life and stuff, I have come to the conclusion that he is speaking loud and clear to me to begin the reading of this book so others can hear it. Ones that are maybe not actually big readers, that are looking for some good Christian entertainment, and would like to hear it read personally by me and be able to watch a video to get you know, the fulfillment of the story and everything. So we will get started. And if you also have not read my first book, because here in the front it tells you also by Ashley Murphy is Daddy's Briefcase. So if you have not read that book, find that on Amazon. It's called Daddy's Briefcase, about the journey of me when I walked through liver cancer when I was 23. So here in the beginning, right next to this page is uh, words from me, so you know, consider words from the author. For you, reader, in silence, reach for hidden dreams within your soul, for every dream reaches a goal. God wants to use you for what only you are able to reach. Let your light shine, dream. So, getting into the actual story itself. In a firm downward motion, I nudged my laptop closed. My feet wiggled in front of me, touching the floor. The muscles stiffened in my bent legs, pushed me to a stance. Hey girls, do you want to ride to the grocery store with me? Both Gracie and Elizabeth prayed towards the back entrance of our home. Our family car parked on the other side of the door. Upward, my fingertips reached, touching the garage opener mounted on the door frame. The passenger side front and the back door opened simultaneously. Both girls climbed in, one in the front, one in the back. Their faces held smiles. Around the lift gate side of the car, my feet shuffled. After I opened the driver's side door, my bottom end pushed against the seat. Then, my ivory palm slipped on the car door handle, pulling it towards me. The brake pedal pushed down by my right foot. After the gear shift rest in my hand, I slipped the car in reverse. The car wheels rolled backwards. Brake, drive. Then the wheels rolled forward a great distance on our driveway. Glimpses of white through heavy sweet bay tree brush caught our eyes. Elizabeth sat in the light tan rider seat next to me. She spoke up. Oh, it's the mailman, Mom. Stop. The wheels barely touching our street. I pressed the brake. Stopped. Elizabeth opened her door. Then she strolled over to the jet black mailbox. She lifted her right hand in the air, waving as the mail person continued on his route. A pile of mail covered her arms. Gracie's head pressed forward, staring at her handheld game device. And I just want to share with you, too, the way that this particular book is laid out. It is a verse novel. To some, it may seem like choppy, but that is just the particular writing that I enjoy for this particular book. This is the um, adventure that I set out to write. So if you can see how it is a verse novel. Okay. In the fall, Gracie will enter third grade. The girl prefers to hunt with her dad. Her recreational sport of preference is soccer. She loves playing on those green grassy fields. Her favorite color is blue. No matter what, she beams on and off the soccer field. Most games, she holds her own in the goal. Often, I mention she will be the next goal kicker for the high school football team. She always laughs. For now, nevertheless, I realize my daughter will continue dirt bike riding. Elizabeth will start 11th grade in the fall. She prefers to watch movies and talk on the phone with classmates. Her favorite color is pink. 
Mad organizing skills help her maintain the volleyball manager title at the academy she attends. Each season, I look her in the brown eyes, speaking encouraging words. You should play, Elizabeth. She responds, Mom. Her soul shines brighter than a shooting star. The car abruptly crossed double yellow lines in the middle of the street. My head yanked forward, then my blue eyes grew big, confirming no cars approaching on the other side of the hill. On to my heart dropping in the pit of my stomach saying, Thank you, Jesus. People call me MG, short for Marcy Jean. Mom says she named me after my grandmother. Both hands gripped the steering wheel, jerking the tires back over the double lines. Out of the corner of my eyes, I spotted glances of my girls. Their eyes emerged wide open. Their backs sat straight up in their seats. The car ride continued to the local grocery. My mouth remained shut, my eyes glued to the road. Elizabeth's left pointer finger stuck out against the translucent window. She tapped towards an empty parking place, a few steps from the front door. I pulled my car between two white lines. Finally, we entered the grocery. Gracie wandered near the buggies and her hands touched one. She spun around facing my direction, small or big buggy. I pointed towards the small gray one, the perfect size for playing house. Gracie pushed the buggy up and down the aisles. Elizabeth and I walked in front of her. We placed items from the shelves into the buggy. Blue ink flowed from my pen onto the white paper. The top of the paper was stamped in gold with my initials. One by one, the blue ink slashed each item listed on the grocery list. Tilapia, lemon, foil, broccoli, paper towels, milk, eggs, spinach, chicken broth, tea bags, sweet potatoes, note cards, cereal, coffee, and cheese pizza. Gracie rounded each corner with the buggy, pushing harder each time, keeping up with us. Her small feet stopped in front of the self-checkout. I paid, at last, the grocery list and receipt tossed in the bottom of my purse. We drove home on our side of the road. Out our back door, I stood in front of the double grill. Seasoned stuffed tilapia covered the wholly fooled grill tray. Grease sizzled around the edges of the tilapia. Smoke slithered in the air. Behind it, my attention floated away. Flash. Over and over, flashes of me looking to my left out my driver's side window, me looking back straight ahead then out my front windshield at the road in front of me and me realizing my tires roll forward in the oncoming traffic lane. As the grill closed, my feet shuffled adjacent to the back door. My thoughts paused, could not move. Stuck. A sign wedged in the hard ground of the yard I caught sight of glancing out my driver's side window under contract. I can only imagine how Marcy Jean felt as here she was on an adventure going to the grocery store with her two precious daughters and obviously there was a home of some sort that she had been eyeballing to see a sign with under contract in, in the yard of it. She, she must have felt really devastated. Those two words paused in my head. Under contract, more than swerving of my car, more than seeing the other lane out my front windshield, and more than the food cooking on the open pit. Meanwhile, Elizabeth pulled four classic drinking glasses from the cupboard beside our stainless refrigerator. The glassware rested on the painted wood countertop. Her hand grabbed into the freezer behind her, Ice cubes clanked in the bottom of each glass. Gracie's flat foot stride past each place setting. She laid out folded, crisp white napkins and placed a fork on each. Over the years, I've tried to instill how important family mealtime is to my kids, even on terrible days. 
we don't have many of those, right? Who has those anyway? The lock on the back door clicked. The door sprung forward. Loud boots pound up the hallway near the kitchen. Our family dog barked once. Shane, my husband, peeked around the corner. At the same time, each night he gets home, give or take five minutes. He stopped, pushing his leather brown work boots off one foot, then the other foot. He sat them next to the cabinet. Each night, I goo-goo over his handsomeness, always more than the day before. I build on our love story daily. He walked over first, his whiskers pressed against my cheekbone, his warm ear pressed against my temple. Then he grabbed each girl separate, including the dog, snuggle, hugging them. Days before we agreed as a family, we'd work on our prayers over dinner. Hubby's obedient heart prayed. This has not always been easy for him, but in God's perfect time, the Holy Spirit is moving. Praying is, a, is taking place around our square dining room table. We shine a graceful light of, on mastering praying as a family. Prayers, dinner, clean kitchen, and I tucked both girls in bed. Shane pulled his desk chair out. Then his legs slid under the cream-colored desk while his bottom end rests in the striped chair. First, he signs his name on several checks. Then he slid each check in the proper utility envelope. His tongue licked long ways, pushing each tap closed. In the upper left corner of each envelope, he pushed our circular return address dispenser. On each envelope, in the upper right, he stuck postage. His chair slid back. The envelope bottoms evenly clicked on the desk. He laid the stack of mail on the counter, on the end of the counter, where we would know to mail them the next day. At last, not missing a beat, his feet carried him into the living room where I sat in our double-sized chair. In front of the chair, he stopped. His bottom backed into the chair next to mine. I scooted over as much as I could without him seeing. Settle, settled, he snuggled up next to me, pulling the blanket over his feet. We watched the nightly news together before showering for bed. Our clean bodies climbed onto our off-white satin sheet sliding our four post bed. On the way to the grocery store today, the kids and I saw an under contract sign in the yard of, of the house on Henderson Street. Shane's head turned towards mine. Our eyes met. What house? Henderson Street? Memorial Day weekend kicked off. The marking of summer. My Facebook news feed scrolled. Gradually, my eyes stumbled over. Toes covered in sand. A family of four dressed in crisp white shirts and blue jeans. Three teen girls in bikinis. Beach-bound statuses. Sand buckets, shovels, beach towels, margaritas, ice chests, parasailing, seafood, lifeguards, and condos. Until my mouth stopped, I pushed the keyboard panel forward. Then my chair slid back. I stood to walk elsewhere. My mind squealed. In that moment, my thoughts stopped. Along with my heart crying out, thank you, Jesus, for my family, my friends, for everything going on in my life, my current location. Thank you for no sand in my crag. By this time, my heart balanced. Small steps, one by one, my feet wandered. In front of our double brown front door, they stopped. Across our big green front yard, my eyes gazed. Shane bounced around, passing back and forth on his zero-turn mower. Because my season of life caused my family to be home for the holiday weekend, I'm overjoyed. Elizabeth leaves tomorrow for her musical mission trip. Soon, the back door burst open. Honey, yeah, I'm hungry. Our feet land in front of each other in the hallway. Sweat rolled off his forehead. His arm pushed up, wiping it off. Cheerfully, I scooted an inch closer, grabbing the side of his torn gray t-shirt. Come shower. Let's go out to dinner. Shane turned walking out the back door. Sounds of his mower 
perched inside my ear ears. The tip of my nose touched the open blind. I watched as he parked his mower under the awning outside our garage. We ate as a family of four at the local fish house as a great gesture before Elizabeth left town. Gracie did not gather her cornbread and french fries to feed the ducks. The three of us, Shane, Elizabeth, and I, looked at each other. At the same time, we said, that's a first. Gathering my cell phone and purse, I shift my chair back. Everyone joined. We marched together to the front of the fish house. Shane paid. We left. I watched the ducks swim in the water out my passenger window as we backed away. Sunday morning, we drove to the church for Elizabeth's 6.30 a.m. check-in. On the way there, she shared when she returns, she will work intensely on the recycling program for her school. Wait, what? You'll do what? Shane's foot continued resting forward on the gas pedal. He pulled in the parking lot. The front door was close by. The four of us went inside the gym. Elizabeth rolled her big pink paisley suitcase behind her. She rolled it by the luggage sign. We hugged her neck and left. Wednesday came flying in sideways, minus Elizabeth. Several days of quietness settled in as a pinch of emptiness. Gracie and I stood in front of the motor room window looking. Shane pulled his truck next to the cream flower bucket. Lavender lantana draped over the edges. His headlights shined on our eyes. He fumbled with an unknown object, object on his passenger seat. The heavy driver's side door opened in a procrastinating motion. His feet dangled to his stance on the pebble concrete. I took two puny steps back. My right hand brushed Gracie's left shoulder. Shane nudged the back door open as Gracie and I wandered to the kitchen. He walked straight towards the island, our takeout order released from his arms. While he went back to his truck, Gracie and I fixed three drinks. When back inside, he walked straight near the island for the second time, releasing a cake, ice cream, flowers, and a card. Under the sink, I reached for a glass face. Gradually, water filled from the faucet. At the halfway mark, water stopped filling up the sides of the vase. Out of the knife block, I grabbed the scissors over the green over the over the garbage can I trimmed the ends of each flower the vase sat in the middle of the island Shane reached around my waist against the vase he rest the card he then leaned into me happy birthday I'm so sorry I did not tell you this morning we ate Shane slipped his hands in the grocery bag sitting on the edge of the counter he pulled a pack of white candles out. Then he put them on the cake, four on one side and three on the other, and lit them with the lighter torch Gracie pulled from the kitchen drawer. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to mama. Happy birthday to you and many more. I blew the candles out. We ate cake. We ate ice cream. Shane stood at the sink. His back faced mine. The water ran over each dish each dish while his hands held the smiling round face sponge grubbing in circular motions. I stood near the island. Meanwhile, my arm stretched towards the card. My name is handwritten on the front. My hand pulled it near my navel. Under the edge of the seal envelope, my right thumb nail pushed. My thumb worked from one side to the other. I pulled the card out of the open envelope. My eyes gleamed. Tiny turquoise letters covered the front of the white card. On the inside, I peeked before finished reading the front. Shane's handwritten handwriting covered the left side. My eyes skipped onto the actual card writing on the right side, onto reading it first. My eyes wandered back to Shane's handwriting. His word pumped my heart up in a mighty way, thanking me for being his wife, being his best friend, and for being the mother. I am to our children. The fun, mushy stuff everyone wants to hear. My eyes continued to read to the bottom where I saw the letters P.S. P.S. Under contract. Okay, I think I'm going to stop there. That was the end of page 33. So, if for some reason you had your copy and you were trying to follow along, 
Thanks.